Hey, welcome back to the channel. Max Wardell, OverheadAthletics.com. Today we're gonna to talk about crow hopping and how you should crow hop for performance and also for training. Two very different things. I saw a video on my friend Ben Brewster's channel, Trad Athletics, recently. I thought I'd touch on that a little bit and then talk about how we use crow hops at the Overhead Athletic Institute and why we use them in specific ways. Ben talked about some different variations that he uses for his pitchers. That's what they see a lot of. We see a lot of pitchers, but we also see a lot of position players. And he talked about some different types. I suggest you guys check out that video. It's pretty good. They go through kind of some pros and cons of using a shuffle step versus a step behind versus kind of a hop hop drill, what we call a hop hop drill where he's bouncing on the back leg. So I think it's a good video and it brings up some salient points. We also want to talk about some other things as far as crow hops on the field and how we can start to instruct our younger athletes how to crow hop more efficiently so that when they get on the field, they can be more game ready, but also can utilize some of those techniques in their training to enhance their throwing velocity and performance. The first thing we want to talk about as we go into the other room with Chuck here to do some throwing is a step behind versus a step in front crow hop and some of the pros and cons of those, why one is maybe better for performance enhancement in a training setting and, and why we may use that and more on the field, but then also some other variations that you can utilize to enhance your throwing performance, throwing velocity, and allow you to be more athletic on the field. So let's jump into the other room and go through some of those. So let's go through crow hopping technique here. I got Chuck, one of our instructors here at the OAI. He's a former professional pitcher, left-handed, so we'll show everything from the wrong side, the left side here. But uh, what we're going to do is talk about kind of the three different main types of crow hop that are often used in the field. Number one is the shuffle step. So let's see a shuffle step here, Chuck. The shuffle step usually incorporates the feet coming together and then apart. So usually the feet come together, then apart, and the throw ensues. Then we have a step in front crow hop. This is kind of our traditional crow hop that's taught to many guys throughout their career and as they're younger athletes. So he's gonna actually step in front. And that step in front is something that we see sometimes where some guys will accentuate that with a big lift. You wanna show that, like a big kind of jumping crow hop. And I've seen this, you know, coached at a, at a younger age for some guys where they kind of jump in front and, and run through the throw. And then conversely, we have a step behind crow hop. And so Chuck can show us a step behind crow hop really quick. Now that's been called the pitcher's crow hop in the past. And the reason for that is because they said, well, you don't do that one on the field. You do that one in training for pitching because it helps you stay close. Well, something we want to consider is if it helps you stay closed, it may be a useful strategy on the field. I would advocate that you use all three different types of crow hops in different situations. When you have more time pressure, where you have to field the ball, get it out of your hand quickly, you're going to use a shuffle crow hop because you simply don't have time for a big step in front or a big step behind and a big run up. So let's go through that shuffle crow hop one more time just so everybody at home can get a good idea of what we're talking about. So let's say Chuck doesn't have a lot of time. He, make, he fields the ball really quick. He has to shuffle and go. He doesn't have time for that step behind or that step in front. That's not gonna allow us to display our highest velocity, but it's gonna get a little momentum to the target, allow us to throw a little faster than just say, catching the ball and going. So it'll increase our momentum to the target, increase our speed a little bit, but maybe not our top end velocity, maybe not the best strategy in all situations. If we go to that step in front crow hop, We'll see something like that all the time where we see this big jump up in front, the foot lands. Now, if I'm throwing at you at the camera and I step in front, what does that do to my pelvis? Well, that automatically opens my pelvis a little bit to the target. So as soon as I step in front, my pelvis is a little bit open. It's gonna be very difficult for me to get my hips closed if I'm gonna make that throw. So maybe not the best for arm health is to step in front because I'm already a little bit more open, which is gonna expose my shoulder and elbow to stress early in the throw. So the step in front crow hop may be not as optimal for preserving arm health. And also, because it doesn't allow you to load all the way close through your hip and through your core, it may not be the best for throwing velocity. And then the question is, well, when is it the best? 
And I would argue that it's probably great in scenarios where you have to throw it in that direction. Let's say as a right-hander, I'm playing left field, I catch the ball coming this way, and I'm throwing it that way. A step in front is my best solution to get the ball to that direction. However, if I try to arbitrarily select one of these techniques, like a step in front crow hop, and that's your crow hop, that's what you do, is you step in front when you throw, and I catch the ball moving to my throwing side, and I have to throw back towards my glove side as a left fielder to say second base, oh, I can't do it. So I'm gonna have to actually catch, step, then step in front to make the throw, which is not a very efficient strategy. So on the field, sometimes the step in front crow hop works, and that's usually if I'm throwing to my arm side. It's not necessarily the best strategy in most scenarios because it doesn't allow me to throw as fast, and you can take any thrower and have them do a step behind crow hop and a step in front crow hop, and they're not gonna throw as fast on the step in front crow hop, on average, there's no way that they can compared to that step behind crow hop. And I would say if somebody did, it's probably just because they have no experience throwing with a step behind crow hop. So we'll show that step in front crow hop one more time. From the outfield, maybe a great strategy, step in front, but we wanna minimize this upward motion. This upward jump out in front is really not gonna be that effective in increasing our speed going forward. And we know that usually when we're using a step in front crow up, it's because we need to throw the ball fast and far, which going up doesn't really help us do, and we need to get it out of our hand quickly, which going up really doesn't help us do. So we can minimize that upward jump with a step in front crow hop by being a little bit lower to the floor. That allows us to conserve momentum going forward and maximize our momentum to the target while really decreasing the amount of time it takes to complete the throw. Because if I'm gonna go up, I'm gonna have to slow down to be able to go up and then make an efficient throw. My choice and what I think is the most effective, not only for training, but also for throwing in the game is the step behind crow hop. And it really doesn't slow my run down that much. One of the arguments that I hear time to time is, yeah, but if I, I'm already running forward, if I do a step in front crow hop, I can continue running that way. But then what you don't realize is when you crow hop and you're run, if say you're running full speed and I crow hop, I actually have to slow down during the crow hop to effectively throw the ball. Rather than what we'd like to see, which is people that build speed during the crow hop. So they're going faster at the crow hop at the end, which allows them to maximize their ball speed. So really, I don't think there's any loss of time going into a step behind crow hop if you use the proper lead up steps with it. That's how we may use that crow hop in training. That's kind of what that step behind crow hop looks like. Now let me see it if say you just, bam, I caught the ball. I'm gonna go right into that step behind crow hop. That step behind crow hop is actually going to keep my pelvis more closed. When we look at a shuffle, decent, step in front, open to the target, a step behind crow hop, my hips are actually closed, allowing me to manifest more power from my back hip, be more close from the target later in the throw, which allows me to protect my arm as I come through and manifest or create more velocity in the throw. So let's do that one one more time. Do it the first way you did it as if you were gonna do a, what we call a run and gun, which is a variation of a step behind crow hop, which is gonna help him dynamically load that back leg. The step sequence on that throw is really a one, two, in front, three, and back. So it looks kind of like this, where I step with my glove side, throwing side, glove side sideways, behind with the arm side, and then I go. A one, two, three, four is our run and gun throw. And that's an effective way to start to load this back leg and increase velocity. We have other styles of dynamic throws that we'll utilize in the training setting, such as a hop hop drill those are great for dynamic loading of the back leg but something that we don't use on the field we have a few different crow hop techniques that we utilize i think we need to train all of them the shuffle crow hop i think we need to train the step behind crow hop step in front crow hop be able to be as athletic as possible on the field but I'd really advocate your primary crow hop be the step behind crow hop. And ultimately, if you practice these things, you don't have to think about them. They occur naturally on the field. If you went to any major league player, even a college player, they're not thinking about the type of crow hop they use when they're on the diamond. And the only time they really decide what type of crow hop they're gonna use is when they 
use these crow hops for velocity enhancement. And in those cases, I generally will advocate a shuffle step for some of our elementary throwing where you're just increasing your throwing intensity after a return to throw program or a step behind crow hop because the step behind is gonna allow us to stay closed like we talked about, put more force through our back leg and ultimately throw faster. If you guys like this video on the crow hop technique, hit the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you guys in the next video.